Welcome to this uh, presentation on blue booking. This will be one in which we cover examples. This is the fourth session and the examples that we'll be covering are federal cases. So we won't have to worry about the green book at all. If you don't already have your blue book handy, please uh, pause me and go get that blue book so that you can follow along. Unfortunately, I don't have an online version of the blue book and so um, I won't be able to actually put the green book on the screen, but we will be talking about page numbers and things like that. So you'll find uh, lectures for this class um, in the first module. So once you get on to into our classroom, uh, our first module is now called video lectures. Just scroll down and I try to put them in the order that I make them, the most recent one being at the bottom. So I'm going to now go over to our Word document and start uh, working on our next uh, blue booking uh, project. So we can see what I've done is I've taken the uh, site from Westlaw. So basically what I did was cut and pasted it. And I'm going to go through and figure out what I need to keep and what I need to uh, throw away here. So. Here is the style of the case. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put this style right oh, I'll just keep in the original format. And now I'm going to clean it up. So here we have the format um, of our style. So let's get the style in order. So since this is a human being here, we're going to take off her first name and we're going to take off her party status and the comma after her name. So we're just going to have her last name, space, let me make this a little bit bigger. Last name space, lowercase v, period, space. We can see on this side we have, um, well, let's get rid of the party designation first. Let me get rid of this. And we have one, two, three, four parties. So since we only care about the first one, we're going to lop off all of the others. And I'm going to put a comma at the end. Now I'm going to change this so that it's not in all caps. You can just retype it if you prefer, but there's a bit of a shortcut here. We're going to make, we're going to capitalize each word. We're going to hit that twice. And we're going to have to make the V lowercase. There may be other words we need to make lowercase. Now I'm concerned about, oops, I, have a, I dropped a period here. Now I'm concerned about um, the abbreviations. So I'm going to turn to uh, table T6 in the 20th edition. This is on page 496. And I'm going to see if there's an abbreviation for stores. It's actually, if, it were, if there is one, it'll be on page 498. There doesn't seem to be. Now, I, I before was not certain about what to do with LLC, so I did a little bit of research in the Blue Book. And as usual, the Blue Book is not that, make, they don't make it very easy for us. But I, I, I turned to page 100 of the 20th edition, and it did provide a bit of information. So if you would flip to that page, and you can see about midway in the page, it has H, business firm designations. And it shows various things to omit if there are these other words associated with it. Um, you can see that all of the terms seem to be in the blue book format. So LLC is listed in here. And so I am guessing that they are designating that as blue book format. Um, that's what made sense to me. And so that's what I'm going with. So that's my best indication I'm not 100% sure that's definite, but it's good enough for this class. Um, and so now we have our full blue book formatting of the style of the case. 
So now I'm going to highlight, actually I'm going to try to underline first. When I underline, I'm going to have to go back and un-underline the uh, comma there. And we're done. I'm going to do a space, and you can see I have the um, pill crow turned on. If I were to turn the pill crow off, um, you wouldn't be able to see the space. But I'm going to turn the pill crow back on. And I'm going to go up here and look for our style. I'm going to just go cut and paste this too. Oops, wait a second, that was a bad mistake on my part. Here we go. So um, it just so happens that this is the correct way to designate the federal reporter. Um, and the, the, the way that I would approach doing this is I would go to the back two pages, which is one of the pages is the back cover, and then the page next to that. And if you look in the cases section, they give you an example of F second. F period 2D, that's actually the first case they cite. So that's my clue that, this, that there shouldn't be a space here and that I ought to use 3D. Um, I'm sure that if I were to look this up, there would be a, a location in the book that were to give me that exact instruction. I didn't actually look it up before we got online. Let me just do a quick search and see if I can find it easily. If I can, I'll tell you. If I can't, I'll tell you. Just trust me. So federal reporter. So um, we're given a couple of different pages. I'm going to go to page 234. Ah, uh, yes. So you can see on page 234, a little bit below the midpoint of the page, they list the three ways that we designate the federal reporter. F period, F period 2D, F period 3D. So this is the correct way of designating it. Even without looking it up, I, if I remember the blue book rule, which is when the abbreviation is a single letter, I don't make a space, then I'm good to go. So this is our volume. We put a space in front of it, we put a space after it. This is our reporter. We put a space before it, we put a space after it. And then this is the page in which the opinion begins. If I want to do a pinpoint citation, in other words, direct the reader's attention to a particular page in the document, I'm going to put a comma, space, and then maybe it's page 174, and I'm done. So now I have the, I have the what is right here, and I have the where. Now I need to do the who. So I need to do a space, the who and the when go in the parentheses. So let's look up here and find the who. Well, the who is going to be our fifth circuit. So, um, actually not going to type that in here. There's that uh, little uh, trick to doing a fifth circuit or any other numbered circuit. I hit the five, I do a few spaces. I capitalize C-I-R period, and now I go back to right after the five and do T-H. And I get rid of all of the spaces but for one. And so because of that method of doing it, my T-H did not superscript. Then I do a space and I'm going to put the year in. In this case, there is just one year filed, so it's going to be 2018. You may say, well, is that when the, the appeal was filed or the initial lawsuit was filed? No, that's when the opinion was filed. So that's the final date. If there's just one date below the style of the case, then you are you just use that one year. If there's more than one date, and we'll have some examples of that going forward, then you need to uh, pay a little bit more attention to it. So we're done. And here is the version that I did before we had class. And other than the fact that I did different pinpoint citation looks good. So I think we're good to go. Now I'm going to go. Obviously, if this had been a different circuit court, I might have done 11th or 8th. If it were the first, I would need to. Um, 
I would need to do that if it were, you know, second, third, I would do in D for second, RD for third. So you can see we don't, you, even though this is the third edition, so we do 3D, we don't do 3D here. We do 3RD. If this were the second edition, we would do 2D, but we would do 2ND. So that's just a little way of thinking about this. I have a funky font going on here, so I'm going to change this to Times New Roman because it's a little distracting. Okay, so we're good to go. If you're not sure how to um, make these into ordinal numbers, you know, the, with the TH or the ND, uh, Blue Book does provide that information in the book. Okay, so we're going to go on to the next federal case. And that is one from the DC circuit. So I'm going to start by taking the style of this case. And I'm going to remove some extra stuff. So we can see this is a human being's name, but it's but the, but um, these are this is not a case of this human being actually being sued. It's the company. It's not that unusual for a corporation or a partnership's name to have human beings in it. So we don't treat it as if this were a human being. We're going to keep, in other words, James and McHugh and we're going to keep construction company. But we are going to remove the uh, party status, which in this case is appellant. There's lots of different party statuses that we can have. Appellant's a common one. Petitioner, respondent, appellee are also common. This one is a human being, um, Ir Irvin Martin. And so we're going to remove his first name. And the et al means is short abbreviation for et ali e which is and others. So there were several other people involved in, on uh, Mr. Martin's side of the, the matter. We're going to remove all of those names as well as the party designation. We're going to put a comma here. Now we're going to look up construction and company to see what the abbreviation is. So we're going to go back to um, page 496. I encourage you to use like a post-it or fold down a corner of the page because this is a very common page to spend some time on. And as I look here, yes, there is an abbreviation for construction. It's probably not the one that you or I would have picked and that's why it's so helpful to have this reference because um, if we rely upon our intuition, we'll be wrong most of the, or at least I'll be wrong most of the time. And I'm going to also do company, which is also on that same page. So it looks like we're good to go. And now I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of the italics. I am going to push this button again with capitalize each word. Capitalize each word again. Doing it twice is what gets you to the sweet spot. Now I will have to clean this up. And there's a couple things I need to do this time. Um, we have to capitalize the H in McHugh, and we need to make the V lowercase. That's probably the, the one that people forget most commonly. Now I said, or for assignments you do this class, you'll want to be consistent and always underline or always italicize. Never do both for the same style and pick one or the other method. So I'm going to stick with underlining. Sometimes the word will work with you and won't underline the comma, sometimes it won't. I don't know what the deal with that is. Um, there probably is some re rhyme or reason to it. So I'm going to take our style again, copy, plop it down here. And there doesn't need to be any corrections. I had a space before our volume, a space after the volume. My style is correct. There's no space here in the middle. I have a space here. This is the first page of our opinion. But let's say in this case, I want the reader to just pay attention to the whole case. I'm not directing his or her t attention to a particular page, so I'm not going to add a pinpoint site. So now I have the what and I have the where. Again, in parentheses, I'm going to put the who and the when. 
The who is the um, DC Court of Appeals. So how do we do that? It's going to be D period C period. Oops. Somehow another I have a. And then we're going to do a space, and we're going to do circuit. Um, the reason that we need a space here is because circuit is an abbreviation that isn't a single letter, but we abbreviate district with just a D, and we abbreviate Columbia with just a C, so we don't have a space there. And so that's the rule about that. You'll see up here, we also had a space between the fifth and the circuit. So now we're going to add a year. Now we can see here we have two dates, the date that it was argued and the date that it was decided. The date in this section that we're going to go with is going to be the one that says decided. There may be a temptation to say, well, always pick the last year, but that's not always true. Uh, sometimes it'll say rehearing denied or something like that. Something that happened after the decision was published. Maybe the decision wasn't immediately released for publication. What we want is when was this particular document made public? And this one's easy because this is when the case was argued. So obviously nothing had been written. Nothing was ready for publication. The attorneys were presenting their arguments to the court so the court could make the decision. Decided is referring to the, the uh, judges or justices on this particular court. This is the day the opinion issued. So um, that is the correct date. So I think that we are good here. I'm not just going to make sure that I didn't miss something. And again, I had a pinpoint citation here. This, this pinpoint citation I have is actually uh, three pages long. That's a little long for one. Usually they're going to be a single page, maybe two pages, because you really don't want to draw the reader's attention to more than a paragraph or two. Um, you want it to be pretty focused, so this would be unusually long, but it's it's legit. I mean, there's, there's uh, maybe stylistically poor, but it's certainly blue bookable. And so what you do is you repeat all the numbers. So we have three digits here. We're going to have three digits here. We do an N dash, that's just the single short dash, and we're going to repeat this digit, the four, and then put whatever the digit here. So it could have been um, 48, could have been 49. But let's say we, let, let's say this was a nine here. Then we would do, let's say we wanted to go to 50 or 51. That's how we would do it. So we're good. Let's go to the next one. Our next one is a district court, a federal district court. Um, these are the trial courts in the federal system. And most of the opinions in these courts are not published, but you know, a, a non-trivial amount of the decisions are. We can see here, this one is from the Northern District of Texas. It's out of the Abilene Division. We don't use divisions in Blue Book citations. So I'm just going to mark that out. Um, the Northern District is what includes Dallas. So that's a really common one for us to uh, see and work with in Collin County. So I'm going to highlight our style. And I'm going to get rid of some spaces here. You can see for this style, they didn't include party designations. I'm not sure why. They didn't, that's more common than not. I'm going to get rid of the italics. Go get rid of the period, replace it with a comma. Now we're gonna look here. I know this V is a little confusing, but that's actually part of the man's name. Maybe his name is Robert Victor Stewart. So this is a human being. We're gonna get rid then of his first name and his middle initial. And then we have a party. Exxon Company USA, a division of Exxon Corporation. While there are, these are two entity names, they're just explaining, uh, Stuart's just suing this one. This is just explaining how this entity is related to this other corporation. This corporation is not being sued. But honestly, we don't really even care about the answer to that because we're just gonna lop off any name but the first name. So. We're going to lop this off because this is kind of unnecessary commentary for blue booking purposes. It's a good idea for putting on the style of a case, but
but for Blue Book, we don't need to have that. And so now we have the style. Now, um, I'm going to include the USA. It's not clear to me that it's required. Um, I did a little bit of a search and couldn't find a rule on that. So um, if you find a rule that tells me either way USA should or shouldn't be included, please send me an email. Um, but for, for the purpose of this class, I would be fine with either one of those approaches. So I'm going to do our trick here with capitalizing each word. I've italicized it and I'm going to drop the V to lowercase. Now I'm going to look in our book on page 496 to see if we have any abbreviations. And the only one of course is company. So I'm going to reduce that to CO period. And so we have the style in good shape. Then I'm going to take this style, I mean this uh, site form, this location. And you can see here that when uh, Westlaw formats this, they do not put a space here. So you can't trust our good friends at Westlaw to get this right. Um, it does need a space between the period after the F and the SEP because this is like CIRC. It has more than one letter and so we need a space before and after it. We didn't need a space in the federal reporter because this abbreviation is just a single letter and this one isn't really a period related abbreviation. But with SEP we do need a period. Okay, So we have our volume right here. We have our space. We have um, our uh, uh, reporter. And let's just look that up so you can see the rule so you're not just trusting me. I'm going to go to the index and look up Federal Supplement. Federal Supplement is not as commonly used as a federal reporter. Most of the cases in this are going to deal with procedural issues. Federal, ah, here, okay, so it looks like on page 234 is the place for us to go. And you can see federal supplement. It's near the bottom of the page, and it again it shows you um, where the uh, and and also you can find it on two thirty five. This is probably the better place. And you can see if we were in the second edition of federal supplement, we would have. Let me show you what that would look like. We would do a space sd. You see, we wouldn't italicize it. So this, um, actually all of this is a, it's italicized, isn't it? So we would, um, so the, the effect of having this be more than a one letter abbreviation also causes the, the second and the third to need to have a space between SUP. And you can see that in up on page 235. Then we have the first page of the opinion. Obviously we could have a pinpoint site if we wanted to, but I'm not going to for this purpose. So we have completed the what, which is the style of the case, and we've completed the where, which is the citation. Now we're going to do the who, which is the court, and we have it right here. ND, and then again this is one we need to tweak a little bit. ND Texas is what um, Westlaw will tell us, but we actually need to abbreviate Texas. Let me show you an example of that. This is not an example of Texas, so to speak, but um, if you look on the back cover, and again on, on the uh, left side page of, of that, you'll see that the fourth item down shows the Northern District of Illinois. And you can see it's N period, D period, space, capital I, L, L period. So that's um, 
similar to the Texas one. You do need to, when you're using Blue Book, argue by analogy. And since obviously Illinois is um, three letters, Texas is three letters, you do it in the same way. So we have the court now. Again, we're not you're going to use anything about the Abilene division or anything like that. We have a space. We're only given one year. You can see this one doesn't even say filed or decided. It just gives you a single year. So that's easy. We have the year and we close parentheses. So you will cite cases from all of the district courts in Texas routinely, all the federal district courts. But let me just show you how to do the one for ours. Since we're in Collin County, the Eastern District is ours. And so we just change the N to an E. Obviously, if you're doing the Southern, you would do this. If you were doing the Western, you would do this. So I think we have a good citation here. Let's see if there is anything that we need to change. Ah, uh, well, I guess I, it's not really the second edition. I just did that for, as an exemplar. Okay, looks like we're good. So now we are going to go to um, a U.S. Supreme Court case. So I'm, actually, I'm going to skip over this one for just a second and then go back to it. We are going to do an online case. I'm not going to spend much time with this at all because I'm not going to ask you to do this. But here is the actual opinion um, that you can find on Westlaw. And you can see it's Ron I. Paul versus South Carolina Department of Transportation. I actually took that, the style here, and you can see it's a pretty easy matter to type this up. I'm just not going to cut and paste the whole thing. I'm just going to put Paul, I don't need a comma there, V period. Then I'm going to type South Carolina. You might think, well, should I use the abbreviation like if this, let's say this were Texas Department of Transportation. Should I do TEX period Department of transportation no we write out the full name here so um, let's just say it was um, a Texas court we'll just pretend for a second and we'll go one two three southwest second four five six we'll do TX here so here we'd write out the whole state name but here we would use the abbreviation uh, again, the secret here is to um, use your, your blue book. Uh, if you do these enough times, you'll remember this rule, but it's not the most intuitive thing ever. With respect to our style, we're going <coughs> to cut off all of the names other than our first name. So I'm going to switch it back to South Carolina. And then how do I know the Department of Transportation abbreviations? Well, same place I found the other abbreviations, page 496. So department is one of those abbreviations that is uh, where we remove certain letters here. So we remove these letters. We're going to place it with an apostrophe, so therefore we aren't putting a period at the end. And then transportation, again, this is not how I would abbreviate it, so that's why I always look it up because I'm not good at this intuitively. So it's on page 498 and you can see it's transportation and there we go. Um, it's obviously sort of part of stuff that I made up. So let's see what we have. I'm going to get rid of the italics here. Actually I need to get rid of the italics for the comma as well. Okay. I spelled Carolina. Okay. So let's go back here. So we um, you perhaps notice something very quickly is that we have this weird citation where we usually see uh, F second or F sub or Southwestern SW second. We see something with a year, WL, and then a bunch of numbers. What is that? That is what's called a Westlaw site. This is for an unpublished opinion. This is the year that the opinion was published, and this of course stands for Westlaw, and then this is the number that Westlaw has assigned to it. Lexis has a similar system. Um, either, you know, if you're using Lexis, you can do that as well. In addition to the, the location within Westlaw, we also do the case number. 
So I'm going to copy that and plop that in the opinion. Again, this is stuff you would look up. Um, there are people who not remember how to do this, but I always, I'm not one of those people. So we have the style just as we usually would. And then we have the equivalent of the reporter. But when we're using an unpublished opinion like this, we're going to also add this identifier. And then from here on out, it's pretty much, well, actually, there is one more change we're going to do. Let's see what the court is here. So the court is a district court in South Carolina. District Court, South Carolina. And then we have, we don't use just the year. I suppose the reason we don't use year is we already have the year, so it's kind of duplicative. We actually use the whole date. One of the reasons why sometimes people use these unpublished opinions is that it may not yet be published. This may be a very recent decision. Obviously, this one isn't. This is just a case that's never going to get published. Um, and so um, we're going to just do the whole date. Um, now, again, I never remember whether I'm supposed to have a space here or not. So I'm going to look up the rule. And let's see, let's look on page 99. That's one of the rules that I reference here. Let's go to 99. And you're not going to be asked to do an unpublished opinion. In here, ah, oh, this is uh, the page that kind of talks about um, whether you, you list the full state name or not. And you can see there's an example in about uh, midway, actually the first example under F is Blystone versus Pennsylvania. And you can see they don't use the Westlaw abbreviation, which is P-E-N-N -N period. They write out the whole name and we can see later on they have kind of midway in the page, another case where they mention Pennsylvania. Later on they mention um, Indiana. Um, and so for those reasons, you can see arguing by analogy, we're going to spell out all of South Carolina. Then I've got another page, 105, which shows us what to do if we happen to have a um, a court like South Carolina that is just a single letter. And so you can see that we don't put a space. So again, if this were Texas, or we'll say Massachusetts here, it'd be like this. Oops, be like this. M A S S because obviously Massachusetts has more than one letter in the abbreviation. So we do have the space, but if we were doing New Jersey, for example, we would do, because obviously both new is abbreviated N and Jersey is abbreviated J. Since these are single letter abbreviations, we don't put a space here. In this case, of course, we're doing the District of South Carolina. Same situation, no spaces. I decided on that approach by looking on page 105, about halfway down the page. Um, and you can see they have D period, N period, J period. There may be a spot in this book that actually gives you the rule, but I find the examples are sometimes the most helpful. So I'm going to look up under unpublished opinions to see what the format is. If I'm on the right track, so I look under the U. I often find these index not very helpful. And actually, this is a good example of when it's not helpful. So the first thing that I did, I'm on page 559. The first thing I did was look under unpublished materials. That was a complete waste of time because these are unpu unpublished things that are not court cases. Stuff that the odds of you ever using this are like so remote. So then I'm like, gosh, that's not what I wanted at all. Look right below, though, is what I did want, unreport, unreported cases. So I'm going to look on page 14 slash 15. And this gives you an example. You can see near the bottom of the page they have a, a case. And the next to last case listed on the page is Cavass Construction Company versus United States. And you can see they had the case number after the style. So we have the case number after the style. Then they have the Westlaw site. Ah, but I can see one thing we missed. We did not include the particular page. 
Now, I suppose that you could just refer to the whole case, but let's say you did want to do a pinpoint site. We do it differently here. Um, so I'm going to do a comma, and I'm going to do right, type out the word at. Then I'm going to do a little asterisk, and then I'm going to talk about the particular pages. So this is the first page. Um, we can see, well, let's see where we can see a page. Ah, you can see right here. So this is our one telling us that's the beginning of page one. For whatever reason, I'm not always the best at seeing page breaks. Here's page three. So let's say we, we really care about page three. So I'm going to do a little asterisk and then a three and then a space. Um, and that looks like what we need. Obviously, if I was wanting to focus your attention on two pages, it would be page four, like that. And then we'll keep that space. So this one, my suggestion if you ever need to do this is just to look it up. There's just not an easy or, or simple way of, of remembering this one. Let's see if I if I did it pretty. Ah, I had an extra space in here, so I'm actually better this time than I was initially. I only need one space. Oh, well, let's see if there's anything else. No, looks good. Obviously, this is just notes to myself since I looked it up once. I didn't want to forget, and I think I might have had one of these up here. Yeah, these are just notes to myself, so obviously you would actually include those in your citation. Okay, so now we're going to go back and do this U.S. Supreme Court case, and it's Exxon Mobil Corporation versus Saudi Basic Industries. So again, if I want to find a new case, I go to home base. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm just going to add some terms. Now, you certainly could put title, and put it in there, but I'm just going to mobile, and I'm just going to do the word Saudi. That's probably enough, and you can see it pulls up. Let's see which one of these cases do I want? Actually, I did not. Let's see. Okay, I want 544. So I'm going to pull up this one. So here we go. Um, I wanted to actually show you what Westlaw looks like here because there are some things to keep in mind. One thing that you can see is you're given a what a uh, S period CT reporter. This stands for the Supreme Court reporter. This is the reporter of the um, Westlaw company or of, of West Thomson Reuters. Um, some jurisdictions have official reporters and some jurisdictions don't. You can cite either one. You might think to yourself, oh gosh, I should cite the official reporter. Of course, that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense, but no, it's not a thing. Uh, the, the, the other reporters are perfectly legitimate to cite. So it's perfectly fine to cite this reporter. But for the U.S. Supreme Court, there is an official reporter, and it's this one. Most of the time, courts want you to cite just one reporter. And that's the usual blue book rule, unless there's a local rule that's different. So you could list either this or this, but you shouldn't list both unless there's a local rule that's in play. I happen to choose the U.S. reporter, but this is also fine. I would say probably more, more often people use the U.S. reporter than the, the Supreme Court reporter. But again, they're both legitimate, and it's not anything to worry about, uh, depending upon which one you use. You might just find one more convenient for whatever reason. Okay, so that's what, what we're going to do. So I'm going to type, actually, I'm going to just take this style. Cool. So it looks like we've got a few entities. We, this is entity number one. This is entity number two. You can see they're usually separated by semicolons or commas. And this is entity number three. We only are going to use the first entity. We're going to get rid of all of these entities as well as the party designation put a period here. 
and then ExxonMobil Corporation is just suing one entity right here so we're good we're going to remove the period and put a comma so now we need to think about abbreviations so I'm going to go back to that page uh, 496 and I'm wondering what the abbreviation for corporation is this is one of the intuitive ones so I'm just going to remove all of the words since I'm removing the words at the end we're going to use a period instead of a comma obviously it's the same deal here um, let's look at industries though that has an abbreviation and it's again probably not what I would go with but that's okay too so we're lopping off the last letters as a result we're going to use a period at the end so it looks like we have the format that we want we're going to italicize or underline actually I guess I'm underlining aren't I did I not I italicize that but I'm sorry I wasn't consistent uh, I'm going to get rid of that underlining there and now I'm going to capitalize every word for some reason it worked the first time that time so I'm going to get rid of the V and here let me just scroll this down so we're not distracted by that so it looks like we're good looks good now I'm gonna uh, add a space and I am going to use this site again I could use this one I could use this one this is actually the Lexus product and there's this case probably appeared in several other uh, reporters so that's what when you have when you cite more than one in a place we call those parallel citations so if I did list um, if I did list both site sites that would be called a parallel citation both of them are parallel citations so we have our volume so we put a space before a space after then we do our reporter us that's the name of it because each one of these are a single letter abbreviation we don't have a space in the middle we do a space this is the first page of our opinion if we were directing the reader's attention say to 287 we would add that and then a space and now we have to decide what we're going to do about the court but let's first of all look to see what the year is so we have two two dates here we have argued and decided it was argued on 2005 it was decided on 2005 so this is the same so this one's easy we care about the decided one so I'm going to do 2005 close parentheses so you might think well surely there's a special designation for the US Supreme Court no there isn't in fact we don't even include it in here there is a rule um, about blue booking that is uh, true most of the time but as soon as you say it there's an exception so I always get nervous but the general rule is if you tell your reader some information once you don't repeat that information well the only thing that gets published in the US reporter are US Supreme Court decisions so there's no need to say US Supreme Court as the court here because you've already told them that it would be the same if we had used either one of these other two editions because only US Supreme Court cases appear in this reporter and only US Supreme Court cases appear in this one by the way LD stands for lawyers edition um, so uh, there's no need to put the court and as a result we don't list the court so that is the format for this and let me just make sure that everything is good yes that looks good so I think that we have done them all now So for this, we just had to use our blue book. In our next um, session, where we go through some more examples, we'll have some state cases. So we'll be using the, the blue book, and then we'll go back and use the green book to fix any problems that we have. I hope that this has been helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions about any of these blue bookings or, or a question about how to blue book another case, 
feel free to email me or stop by my office hours. I'll be glad to help. Thanks for your attention and have a wonderful day.